Congratulations on successfully building your Avid CNC system. Let's walk through how to set up your CNC machine and make your first part. This is an overview of how to set up your CNC machine, use Mach 4, set up a temporary spoil board, run a program, and make your first part. We also have additional materials that cover specifics of a few of these steps linked in the description below. If you're new to CNC, I recommend that you watch this video all the way through and then dive deeper into each step. Next steps will include squaring and tramming your machine, setting up a spoil board, as well as dust fiction. Our goal with this video though is to help you feel confident in operating your CNC machine before you move on to more advanced projects. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so our machine is built, our electronics are wired to the machine, and now we're ready to connect the controller to our PC. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take my ethernet cable, and I happen to have an ethernet to USB adapter, so that's how I will Go ahead and plug this into my computer. And the next thing we're gonna do is to turn on our controller as well as enable the motors. So you should be able to hear the motors click on. Uh, to also ensure that your controller is receiving power, you can hear the fan turn on. Or if you place your hand near the fan in an especially loud shop, uh, that can be a really useful trick. So our machine is receiving power. It's plugged into our computer. So now we can go ahead and open Mach 4. So if you haven't already installed and configured Mach 4, there is a detailed tutorial on how to do that linked below. The next thing we're gonna do is double check that all of our physical ESOPs are released and wait for Mach 4 to open. So now our computer is connected to the controller and we have control to jog the machine. So let's go ahead and try that out. There's a few different ways you can do that. We can either use the keyboard arrows or if we in Mach 4 navigate to the jogging tab, we can use the icons there to move the machine. So left and right arrow keys will move the machine in the X plus and X minus direction. The up and down arrows will move the machine in the Y plus and Y minus direction, and the page up and page down buttons will move the machine in the Z plus and Z minus direction. Let's go ahead and try that out. Awesome, so we have control of our machine. We're able to jog the machine around. I can also demonstrate how to use the icons in the jogging tab. So we can use X plus and X minus direction, Y plus, Y minus, Z plus, Z minus. Now that your machine is moving and communicating with Mach 4, let's talk a little bit about the limitations of the movement of your machine. One tool that is really essential in this is the inductive proximity switches, which are a part of the Pepperell Fuchs proximity sensor kit, which is installed on this machine. And this helps with homing your machine, squaring, setting up soft limits or software limits, as well as preventing and helping protect your machine from crashes. So let's go ahead and check that those sensors are operating correctly, that they're installed in the correct locations. If you want to learn more about proximity sensors, how they work and really why you need them, there is an in-depth video linked in the description below. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is find something that is metal. I'll just use a wrench that I have. And when you hold something metal near the sensor within sensing range, this will trip the sensor. So equally, if you move the machine within the distance of the sensor flags, so if you drive the machine to the limit of any axis, this will also trip the machine. So in Mach 4, I will navigate to the Diagnostics tab and go ahead and hold the wrench to each sensor to test that they are working correctly. So this is the Y1 minus sensor. 
I hold this up and the Y1 minus light in Mach 4 has also lit up. You can also see that this has disabled Mach 4. So you can go ahead and check all of the sensors individually and that they are installed in the correct locations and operating. The Z and the X. And lastly, we'll check the Y2 plus and the Y2 minus. Then we'll go ahead and enable Mach 4. I'll demonstrate how this also protects your machine. So if I were to drive the Z-axis up all the way to Z positive within the sensor range, this will trip the sensor. So let's go ahead and try that. So you can see that the sensor became within range of the Z-axis there and that tripped the sensor, which disabled Mach 4. Let's go ahead and enable Mach 4 and move the Z-axis back down. Now we can go ahead and move on to homing our machine. I prefer to drag my machine closer to the front so that during the homing sequence it doesn't have to travel quite as far. Go ahead and click home XYZ axes. Excellent, so our machine is homed and I'll move that back and out of the way. Great, so now we can move on to setting up our temporary spoil board. All right, let's go ahead and attach this temporary spoil board. This is a great way to get a quick start to setting up your machine to start with an easier first project. It gives you time to get comfortable running your machine before you jump into a big project like a spoil board. There are so many decisions to be made regarding the spoil board, such as material selection, work holding features such as T-track or clamp holes, alignment features such as a dowel pin grid or workbench dogs. It's nice to have a temporary option to start with. I'll find a piece of scrap material. Anything around two by two feet or larger will work just fine as long as it can span across the cross members. There are a few options to attach your temporary spoil board to the frame. We can use clamps and this is fine to do. Just be mindful when you're driving your machine around to avoid colliding the spindle with the clamps. Plastic clamps can be a good choice in this case. Or we can use double-sided tape. I'll put some blue tape on the cross members to protect them from the stronger adhesive of the foam tape. Then I'll use a strong double-sided tape to adhere the panel to the frame. The double-sided tape does add some variation in how level the spoil board is in comparison to the machine frame. Let's focus on making a successful cut and then working on squaring and tramming in our next steps. Awesome. Now that our temporary spoil board is attached, let's give it a movement test to make sure it won't shift during the machining process. All right, let's go ahead and test the spindle and run the spindle warm-up program. Link to a video in the description below that dives deeper into why this is an essential part of your startup routine. The spindle warm-up program allows the spindle to cycle through various RPM ranges and it takes about five minutes. This allows the spindle to get up to a stable temperature route, which really helps with accuracy and repeatability. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my safety glasses and we will turn on the VFD or the variable frequency drive. And now we can navigate to the spindle on off button in Mach 4 to test the spindle. Great, so now that we've confirmed that the spindle is on and receiving power, operating correctly, let's go ahead and run the spindle warm-up program.
or let's talk a little bit about work holding techniques. I've linked a playlist in the description below that dive into different approaches that you could use in work holding this project or future projects. Today I'm cutting a 12 by 12 inch piece of Baltic birch, and this is three quarter inches thick. And I'll be demonstrating how to use the Omer nail gun. This is one of my favorite tools and techniques to use as it's really easy and fast to set up. It's ideal for sheet goods such as plywood and MDF. And the way this works is it utilizes plastic nails, which are quite convenient since the spindle can cut right through them without doing any damage to the router bit. Whereas if you're using metal fasteners such as screws or metal clamps, those would definitely damage your router bit if you were to have your toolpath accidentally overlap your work holding. So these are really quick and easy to set up and also relatively safe. I like to hold the fasteners up to the edge of my material to ensure that they're the correct height for this material selection. I like to have it be about half an inch above the surface of the material because I know that's how far it will insert into my spoiled board. We just slide them in here. Alternatively, you might also use the double-sided tape technique similar to how we demonstrated for holding the temporary spoil board earlier. So today we're going to be cutting a few of these wooden clamps, which are another type of work holding, and you can make these by hand as well. They're also quick and easy to set up. They give you the strength of using a metal fastener by inserting a screw into the center of the clamp. It lets you utilize the strength of a metal fastener while reducing the risk of hitting the metal fastener with your router bit. If your toolpaths do overlap the wooden clamps here, the router bit would just cut into the clamp and this is essentially a consumable. So you won't damage your router bit or the piece itself. Another benefit is that these can be used on any kind of materials. So if you're cutting something that you don't want to have a hole through, this is a really great way to do it. So we're going to cut out a few here today. Uh, you can make these by hand, but sometimes it's nice to have a batch of them on hand. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how to use the Omer nail gun and set up our workpiece. Okay, so now I'm going to take my material and place it on the temporary spoil board. Make sure that it is relatively square to the machine frame, but not worry about it too much as I have a one inch border to accommodate the work holding as well as any variation in my material setup. So I have my material ready to go. Next, I'll get my Omer nail gun and attach my air hose. And now I can go ahead and place four fasteners in the corner of my material. Okay, so now we can insert our router bit into our spindle. I have a quarter inch down spiral, which I will insert in about an inch of the shaft into the ER20 collet, which I'm just holding here with my thumb and my forefinger, and then using my middle finger to press against the bit to hold that in place, being careful of the cutting flutes. We'll just tighten that to finger tight. And this is just enough so that the router bit won't slip out of the collet. Next, we will take our wrenches to tighten the collet. I will place the smaller wrench on top and the larger wrench on the collet here and wedge those together. Another technique you can use if you want to have this be a little bit more one-handed is to wedge one wrench against the back of the z-axis here and then move the smaller wrench in the clockwise direction to tighten. You can also use that method for removing the collet and the router bit. Next we'll give our CNC the work offsets and we're going to set our zero to the front left corner and the top surface of our material. We'll do this using the Odyssey and corner finding touch plate. I'll use the corner edge finding wall and place this on the edge of our material. And then we'll drive the spindle over about one inch above the brass plate. I 
I will attach the magnet to the top of the router bit. In Mach 4, we will navigate to the AutoZ touch plate button and open the touch plate window. Here I can type in the tool diameter as well as enter the type of units. I'll type in 0.25 for my quarter inch tool. We can check that the probe signal is working by lifting the touch plate up to touch the router bit and complete the circuit. If on the Mach 4 screen set it lights up as blue, we're able to complete the circuit. Now we'll select the corresponding icon that matches the material that we're zeroing to. In this case, it's the bottom left corner and the surface of our material. Go ahead and click the corresponding icon to your zeroing location. The router bit will lower and touch the brass plate. It will lift up and then prompt us to rotate the flutes to contact the Y wall. So I'll rotate the flutes so the flutes will contact the back wall of our touch plate. Click OK. The router bit will move forward and we can rotate again so that the router bit will contact the far X wall. And click OK. Great, we've now zeroed our material. So you can go ahead and remove the touch plate. In Mach 4, let's go ahead and load our G-code. I like to organize by date modified so that the most recent version of our code will come to the top. Here I will select my program and open the file. So here I have the program loaded. I can see the G-code in the G-code window as well as the preview in the preview window on the right. If you're using metal fasteners, you can jog the spindle around to preview whether or not the red crosshairs will overlap your fasteners. To increase the brightness on your toolpath settings, go ahead and navigate to toolpath settings and increase the line width. Let's briefly read through the G-code in our G-code window to ensure that the G-code lines up with our expectations and how we've set up the project. Let's check our material size is correct. It's 12 inches by 12 inches by 3 quarter inches. Our Z origin for the material is the material surface. Our XY origin is the bottom left corner, the front left corner as I think about it. If you scroll down, you can see what toolpaths are programmed in this file. We have a pocket for the notch in our clamps, as well as the profile for a slot and the profile for the exterior profile of the clamps. We're using one tool in this file, which is the quarter inch end mill, which is T1 tool one. So this will not require a tool change. Great, before you hit cycle start, be sure to review the 10 step cycle start checklist. I'll link to a video on this in the description below, and you can also download one of our 10 step cycle start checklist desktop background designs, the PDF or the VCAR file, so you always have it handy. I recommend that you use this checklist every single time that you run a job and to integrate it into your typical workflow as checklists are one of the best safety tools that we have. And we're ready to go. Go ahead and click cycle start, then let your project run. Once the program is complete, we'll drive the gantry back and out of the way, and we can remove our project from the bed. To remove the plastic fasteners, I use a mallet to tap the material on the side of the material to break the fasteners. Go ahead and remove your clamps from the drop material and clean them up. Now you can use them on your next project. To shut down the CNC, ensure to close Mach 4 first and then turn off the CNC controller. 
Now you can move on to cleaning up and finishing your parts. That's all for this overview on how to set up and the basics in operating your CNC machine. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below to videos and instructions to intro to CNC projects as well as next steps. Thanks y'all for watching. I can't wait to see what you make and I'll see you in the shop.